Algebra 2, set 99, absolute value inequalities and negative numbers in absolute value. Okay, so if we look at a regular number line, you can order all of the real numbers on a number line. Usually we just put the integers on and you can see that there's a definite order to the numbers. Um, now, if we're talking about absolute value, absolute value is the distance away from the origin. So. Um, if you take a look at those blue numbers, the positive numbers are the same, but the negative numbers, for every negative value, it's positive. Because negative 1 is 1 unit away from the origin, negative 2 is 2 units away from the origin, and so on. Every absolute value is positive except for 0. So that's something that's important to remember. You're never going to have a negative absolute value. And the numbers closest to zero have the smallest absolute values. So the farther away from zero, the larger the absolute value. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to take a look and, and look for all of the absolute values that are less than three. So if we're looking at absolute values that are less than three, I've got them highlighted here. Um, so now let's look at the absolute values that are greater than 3. So the absolute values that are greater than 3 are going to be these numbers, but also these numbers here. So we're looking at to the right and to the left of the um, origin. So um, when you have absolute value that is greater than a certain number, you need to be careful because you're going to have two separate sets. So um, if we have x is, the absolute value of x is less than 3, it means x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 3. So that is called a conjunction. So when we're talking about conjunctions, you have x is less than a certain value, and then conjunctions are always graphed in one particular area. You have them all concentrated in one part of the number line. So let's do an example. Graph the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4, and your domain are the integers. So absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4. That means that we have all of the values of x that are less than or equal to 4, and all the values that of x that are greater than or equal to negative 4. So when we graph this on a number line, we want less than or equal to 4, and greater than or equal to negative 4. And we're talking about integers, so we're filling in all of the integers less than 4 and greater than negative 4. Let's do another example. Graph um, negative absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 0. The domain is the integers. So let's. the first thing that you have to do is you have to solve for x or the absolute value of x. So in order to do that, we need to move the 3 over to the other side. So negative absolute value of x is greater than negative 3. Then we're going to divide by negative 1. When you divide by a negative 1, remember that you switch the sign. So instead of being greater than, it's now going to be less than. So the absolute value of x is less than 3. Once we're at this point, we have an absolute value of x that is less than, so we need to split it up. x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 3 because there are two pieces to this part. So when we graph this, we're graphing less than 3 and we're graphing greater than negative 3 and we're doing integers again, so we fill in all of the integers less than 3 that are also greater than negative 3. Okay, so that was conjunctions. Now we're going to talk about disjunctions. So when we have absolute value disjunctions, we're looking for when the absolute value of x is greater than a value. So let's look at absolute value of x is greater than 3. That means that we're looking at all of the values that are greater than 3 or all of the values that are less than negative 3. So instead of being all graphed in one area on your number line, you're going to have them graphed in two different areas on your number line. So for example, 
greater than 3 and less than negative 3, the graph is going to look like this, two different parts. Okay, let's do an example. Um, so the, we want to graph negative absolute value of x plus 2 is less than negative 2. The domain is the real numbers. So the first thing you need to do is get rid of the 2, subtract 2 from both sides. So we get negative absolute value of x is less than negative 4. Now we need to divide by negative 1. Remember when you divide by negative 1, you flip the sign. So we get the absolute value of x is greater than 4. So this means x is greater than 4 or x is less than or less than negative 4. So we'll graph that on a number line. And we get we want the values that are greater than 4 and less than negative 4. And we're talking about real numbers so we can draw the line. Okay, so going back to this idea of number and absolute value, um, and again, I'm going to stress absolute values are never negative. So if you have something that looks like this, the absolute value is less than negative 3. Well, if you look at those numbers, the um, absolute values, the blue numbers, there are none of those numbers that are less than negative 3. So this has no solution because you will never have a value that has no, that has you'll never have an absolute value that is less than a negative number. But if we're looking at the absolute value of x is greater than negative 3, and you look at all of those blue numbers, every single one of those numbers is greater than negative 3. So in this case, it has every solution, so our solution would be all real numbers. So we'll look at a couple of examples like that. Graph. First of all, we're going to graph the absolute value of x is less than negative 2, where the domain is the real numbers. And secondly, we'll look at greater than negative 2. So let's start with less than negative 2. So if it's less than negative 2, remember you can't be less than a negative number with the absolute value. So there are no absolute values that are negative. Therefore, the solution set is empty set. You can also write it as no solution, or you could write it as two empty brackets, meaning empty set. Okay, the second one, we want all values of the absolute value of x that is greater than negative 2. So every real number has an absolute value that is greater than negative 2. So our solution set is all real numbers, because any number that you plug in for x on part b will work, because every single number you plug in there is going to be larger than negative 2, because every absolute value is positive, and every positive number is greater than negative 2. So if we graph that on a number line, you just get every single possible solution. Okay, last example. Graph negative absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than negative 3 and your domain is the integers. So um, the first thing we need to do is get rid of that minus 5 so we'll add 5 to both sides and we get the absolute value or negative absolute value of x is greater than 2. We'll divide by the negative 1 so we flip the sign and you get the absolute value of x is less than negative 2. So here we have a case where we have an absolute value less than a negative number. No absolute value can be negative, so therefore there is no solution. Okay, let's move. Oh, that's the end. All right, there you go.